God of love. Oh, he is the most high God. Walk through your mouth. Thank I you appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But there is no one else like him. Worship the Lord. 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 Oh, yes. Tell him you are grateful. Oh, Tell him, Lord, thank Father you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Lord for favoring me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for yes, waking me up this day. Lord. I am healthy. Yes, my Worship my the King Lord of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Like oh, he is the most high God. Oh, he is the most high God. Oh, he is the most high God. He is the most high. Open your mouth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate him. There are many in the hospital. <laughs> there are many in the hospital. Many are in the wheelchair. Many are not able to eat by themselves. Many cannot see. Many cannot speak. I appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father. I appreciate the I am that I am. Our God, our provider, our Lord. Secutal Yamasundalibova. She loop Rayamasu Talibe. Mandalibos Yahandeleboria. Unmute your mics. Unmute your mics. Appreciate the God of all power. I appreciate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Yes, you are the most high God. You are the most high God. The most high God. Oh, yes, we thank you, my Lord. Oh, yes, we worship you. Say thank you. We are grateful. Hallelujah. By your mercy, by your grace, we are not consumed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we love you, Jesus. Oh, yes, we love you, Jesus. We love you, my Lord. We worship you, my Lord. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Are you aware of the battle that is high for you this night? Are you aware of the battle that is high for you when you were sleeping? Jesus, he covered you with his blood. over Rafa El our healer, my strength we are here. O Jehovah Nisi, Lord is my banner and my victory. And my weapon, so oh Lord, Lord is my savior. The Lord is my redeemer. The Lord is my warrior. The Lord is my savior. He more redeemer. My Jesus, my name. Amen. Amen. Let us plead for mercy. Let us plead for mercy. The blood of Jesus that speaketh mercy. Let us ask the Lord to have mercy on us. In any error, we have offended him. In any error, we have said things, done things that did not glorify him. In any error, we have sinned against him. Let us plead for mercy. Let us ask the Lord to purge, 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 purge our bodies with and soul. Let us ask the Lord to have mercy on us. To forgive us. 
us to blot out our iniquities in according to his mercy seat. Let not us have mercy. Lord, with your mercy. Lord, we ask for mercy. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Plead for mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. Most high and mighty for Lord, we ask for mercy. We ask for your mercy. Whatever we have done, Lord, that did not please you. Anything we have done, Lord, that did not bring glory to your name. Whatsoever we have said, my Lord, my God, that it didn't satisfy you. Lord, we plead for mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord God Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy. Forgive us, Lord. Blot out our names from the book of death, Lord. Write our names in the book of life for Jehovah. Let the blood of Jesus wash us, wash us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, we are pleading for mercy, Lord. We are pleading for mercy, my Lord. We are pleading for mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. Yeah. Oh Lord, I plead for mercy. Lord, I'm pleading for mercy. Forgive me, Lord. Whatever I've done, whatever that came to my mind that did not bring glory to your name. Anything I've done, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me, my Lord, my God. I'm pleading for mercy, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me any spots, any wing for my garment, my school caliber. I plead the blood of Jesus to wash it. In the Musali Haima Candole, Maribu Sulia Catanele, in the mighty name of Jesus Catanele. Merciful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us invite the Holy Spirit to come and take control, to come and rule and reign, to come and have his way, to come and dominate, to come and direct us. <laughs> Let us invite the Holy Spirit to come and take control. He was so ever we are going to do this Sunday service. Let us invite the Holy Spirit because the Bible makes us to know that the children of God are led by the Holy Spirit. We are not going to learn by ourselves. We are not going to teach by ourselves. Let us ask the Holy Teacher, the Holy Comforter, Masulia. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to come and take control. Let us invite him to come and have his way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, we invite you. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you. Come, Holy Spirit, and take control. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way. Come and teach us. Come and comfort us. Come and direct us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we welcome you Holy Spirit of God. Uh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. Uh, come and have your way. Come and have your way. Come and take control. Come and sit us. Come and direct us, O Lord. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit of God. Come and have your way, Spirit of God. Come and take control. Come on, take control. Come on, take control. Come on, have your way. Come and take control. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, we welcome you in our midst. Oh, we welcome you in our midst. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
Let us cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Let us sprinkle the blood of Jesus all over ourselves, our house, wherever we are sitting, our compounds, our masutalia. Let us plead, let us plead, let us sprinkle the blood of Jesus, masutalia, all over ourselves. Let us protect ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Right before we go into the warfare, masulia, masulia, plead the blood of Jesus, sprinkle the blood of Jesus, cover yourselves with the blood of Jesus. Your family, your household, masutalia, Eli. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus all over myself, my house, my compound. Masutale, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Masutale, the blood of Jesus set me free. I immerse myself from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. The blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood of, of Jesus, the Jesus sets me blood free. of the Lord Jesus the from sin and sorrow. The blood, the blood of, of Jesus sets me free. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I soak and sanctify myself with the blood of Jesus. My body is written with the blood of Jesus. My lamp is blind. My tongue is blind. My neck is blind. As the house that door was the blind, I paint in my house, oh Lord, with your blood, with your blood of the Lord Jesus, precious blood of the Lord Jesus, perfect blood of the Lord Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying, the Bible says uh, our battle is not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities, uh, against powers, power. against rulers, uh, spiritual that. wickedness in the high places. Uh, let us take power and authority. Let us enter into the spiritual realm. Uh, let us fly high into the high places. Uh, let us go and bombard data. Let us go and release bombs and fire, brimstone, uh, masutale, in the high places where but the principalities are gathering against our lives, against this Sunday service, Matulia. Fly into the high places. Release fire. Release fire and brimstone. Release the very brimstone, the very burning sulfur, O Lord, that destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Send it forth, O Lord, to all enemies. let us go. There are demons, there are powers in the marine kingdom, in the sea. Let us dive into the sea. Let us visit them with a bombs of surprise. Let us dive into the sea. Dive into the sea. Let us Those 
Let us get out of the sea. Let us come to the land. There are demons in the land. There are demons in the villages, in the cities. Wherever they are gathering, let us spread all over the earth. Let us come out of the sea. Let us spread all over the earth. Let us go and release fire, brimstone, bombs. Let us scatter their plans, their agenda. Wherever they are in the villages, in the bush. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Let us commit this service into the hands of the Lord. Let us commit our brother, Thier Dozier, into the hands of the Lord. Those who are going to minister today, the choir, let us commit it into the hands of the Lord. Whatsoever that is going to take place, let us commit it into the hands of the Lord. Let us commit the program of today into the hands of the Lord. Masuta ita, let us cover the network also with the blood of Jesus. In the Libo Sandele, his network, Masuta ita, Libraham Dolebe, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Lord, my God, we thank you, we worship you. We commit each and everything into your hands, O Lord. The program of today into your hands, O Lord. Put it into your mighty hands. Come and take control. Come and have your way. Masuka Taleba, Rasunda Leba, Tala Musa Taleba. We pray, Lord, that you have your way. You take control. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come and have your way. Come and take control. Masuka Taleba. We commit your servant Chedos here into your hands, O Lord. We commit his network, O Lord, into your hands. Lebo, Libra Sandolebe. Take control. You are the most high God. Yes, you are the Lord. Amen, amen, we open this gathering in the name of the Father. Of Amen. the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Amen
You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. I greet Amen. you all once again with the peace that passes understanding. I had missed you people. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah, it feels good Amen. to be back. Hallelujah. So I have Amen. a testimony. Well, we'll take that when it is time for testimony. We welcome the choir to come and minister. I believe it's Sister Yvonne that is going to lead us today by the grace of God. So <laughs> let everybody mute their mics. Only the choir, only the choir members will have their mics unmuted. We, we are welcome to sing along, but with our mics muted to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Choir Amen. members, Amen. are you here? <laughs> yes, so we are here. Amen. 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 You are welcome. Amen. So, Sister Pascaline, take over. We okay, hey, Sister Pascaline. All right. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hope we are all ready to praise him and worship him this morning. Amen. Yes, Father, we are. Praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord shall be gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto thee. Unto the Lord shall be gathering of his people. We are gathering together unto thee. Oh, we are gathering together unto thee. On the Lord, we are gathering together unto thee. On the Lord, we are gathering of his people. We are gathering together unto thee. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent friend. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah for the Lord God. Holy, 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 holy,
God bless you. God bless you. What Amen. manner of man is Jesus? Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. Uh, we are. Before we proceed, we are going to get some announcements. Uh, the announcement for the Rapture Ready Inter Movement, the weekly activities. There is Monday Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Ghost Fire Night Vigil, 1 a.m. Nigerian, Nigerian uh, time. On Wednesday, there is Bible study, questions and answer by 7 p.m. Nigerian time. On Thursdays, there is Charismatic Hour, Intercessory Prayers, 7 p.m. Nigerian time. On Fridays, there is Holy Ghost Fire Night with you, 1 a.m. Nigerian time. Uh, on Sunday, there is a worship service from 1 p.m. Nigerian time. And every Sunday, there is a, um, there is a, every Sunday of the, every last Sunday of the, uh, of the month, or of every month, there is only uh, a communion service. Um, so you are welcome to to join the Rapture the End Time Movement uh, services and the Bible studies. Um, also, uh, there is workers meeting after the uh, after this service today. Right after the, the service, all the workers they have to to remain. They have to remain because we are going to have a workers uh, meeting. By the grace of God. Uh, and also, uh, there are there is going to be like a mail meeting by 5 p.m. Nigerian time. So if you are here, you are a brother, you can identify yourself in the Skype group by uh, typing "I am a brother," so you can be added into that um, that group, so you can join the mail meeting. And. Um, for the uh, for the offering, we are going to be putting the email that is going to be used is going to be posted in the chat box, so we can just prepare ourselves for that. Mm, yeah, and uh, there's a camp project, REM camp project. Uh, you are welcome to. Uh, I think we all know about the camp project. We've been announcing. We've been. Uh, talking about you are welcome to uh, donate and to help with your support for the glory of our lord jesus christ so before we go into let me see there there is going to be bible reading by sister pastor line before we do that let us uh, welcome those who have testimony those who have testimony you are welcome to testify i don't know how many there are but because of time uh, I believe it was been it has been announced in this web group that to those who have testimony, they need to write to um to Sister Precious. So Sister Precious, how many wrote to you for testimony? Nobody. Okay, so there is no testimony. Well, I have a testimony. And I will testify to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, the reason why I've been absent is because of my exam. The exam I've been reading to, and I excellently passed the exam. Woo! Praise the Lord. <laughs> Jesus is good to me. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus Amen. is mighty. Jesus yes, is powerful. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 I'm so happy. I'm so uh, happy. I, I'm happy so grateful. You, so grateful unto the Lord because yeah. the Bible says that those who put their trust in the Lord, yeah. eh, they shall never be ashamed. At Hallelujah. At Hallelujah. At amen. 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 Oh, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot oh, tell it all. Oh, what the oh, Lord oh, has oh, done oh, for me. I cannot tell you what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell you what He me and He washed me with His blood. Please magnify the Lord.
God with me. Worship him and oh, oh Sikata. Oh Riba Sundale. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Appreciate the Lord on my behalf. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, you are powerful. You are mighty. You are worthy. There is no one else like you. I thank you, my Lord, my God. You have done it, and I know you will do it again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. In Jesus' name, we have thanked him. Amen. 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 Um, and uh, I, I have only one exam left. That is on the 14th. And I thank God because I know I've already passed in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Sister Sandra is asking what is the testimony. The testimony is that I passed the exam. I passed the exam. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God in Amen. the highest. Yes. For his mercies and rest forever. Amen. 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 We are go we are proceeding on our program for today. A Bible reading by Sister Pascaline. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. If Hallelujah. There are no more testimonies. Any more testimonies before I proceed? Even if you didn't write to Sister Precious, if you have a testimony, pick one. Amen. The reading, the Bible reading for today is uh, from the book of Genesis chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 4. May the Lord bless the reading of his word as we read. I read Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought off the fruit of the land and offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the fruit, the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood. <laughs> crieth unto me from the ground, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Mm -hmm. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad, 
and Ira begat Mehujiah, and Mehujiah begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of another was Zillah, and Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle, and his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bore to Baal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, surely Lamech seventy and sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare him a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, For God said she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew, and to whom Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Glenna, please read Matthew 4, chapter 4. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. A reading Amen. according to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 4. I read, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels church concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taked him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From the time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, 
called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other true brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from the couples, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Thank you, Lord, for every word that proceeded out of thy mouth as our daily bread of life. Amen. 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 All to the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done unto the Lord. Be the glory, great things he has done. For the great things he has done. Great things he has done and greater things he will do in our lives. Let us welcome the, our brother Chedosier because the Lord is about to do great things in our lives through him as he shared the word with us to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You are welcome, brother Chedosier and Naile. In Jesus' name. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Welcome. Welcome, sir. I think uh, just a few minutes from now, my, my network came, came on board. And um, I believe we're all doing great also. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I'm thinking, you know, I don't know, would Jesus be sitting down or would he be standing up? So I'm just thinking. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, we'll look into God's word. And, um, so remember that everything I read in my Bible is in your Bible also. So uh, there's no difference, you know. So the same John um, chapter 8 is in the Bible. The same Matthew 24 is in your Bible. So there's nothing I do, but I just open the Bible and I just try to look at what is there and, so that we can also get the same word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will um, bless our soul and bless our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's bow down our heads for prayer. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, King glory, we bless you for another day like this in your presence. And for the Bible says in your presence there is fullness of joy and happiness and peace and love. Lord, let it reign in our lives and 
Let it be in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I have to look at you know, the life of a Christian, uh, um, the life of a Christian, a, a lifestyle, <clears throat> a particular kind of life you want us to adopt, Lord, so that we get to heaven, Lord. Uh, fill our spirit with your word and give us great understanding and give us great revelation and give us great tremor of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, everything that will help us not to receive your word, Lord, everything that will help us, Lord, maybe not to visit back the cross or maybe not to renew back our life back to you, Lord, oh Lord, take it away from our sight right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every bed of the air that will stand against the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word that is able to take you and I to heaven, Lord God Almighty, we come against every such implantations in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, every power that will stand over the network, Lord, we cover with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we cover everyone around there with the blood of Jesus. For all those watching, God, Lord, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. Lord, 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 there is nothing. There is no. There is no distance. Distance is not a barrier in the realm of the spirit. Lord God Almighty, whomsoever you are choosing to bless, you bless. You bless your children, Lord, and let Thy name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God Almighty. We go as we go into your world, Lord. Help us to be more humble to receive your word so that we can get grace to overcome in our daily life, so that we can get grace to become more like you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God Almighty, let the word of God be able to heal us. For the Bible said, Your word is powerful, it's powerful, it's like a two sharp edged sword. Lord God Almighty, let it pierce our heart, let it heal our bones, let it heal our body, and let it give us mighty and great testimonies for in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, I don't I don't know if we Amen. took up testimonies, Sister Shim, Lori. Yes, sir. We did. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Sister Juliet, Sister Juliet Ngozi, we are in the yeah. presence of the Lord and you are welcome. Um, we would love you to cover your head. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, she. Okay. Okay. Um, we look at basically. Some... Okay, she has something on her head. Yes. She uh, to cover her head, cover her head, and uh, maybe to find a, another cloth to cover her chest and her arms. This is to the glory of our Lord Jesus because of the angels in our midst. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. Okay. Um. So basically, we'll be looking at something. Um. <clears throat> just um, a little bit of what the the life, the life of a Christian. The life of a Christian. What made the apostles or the disciples? Why did they come to say Jesus? Oh, I think this is impossible. And what made Jesus said, Oh, with God, all things are possible. There is a standard of getting to heaven, and uh, it's above how gifted you might be it's a life that takes us to heaven it's a life and then there's this life of a christian we must portray you know everybody is a christian nowadays but sometimes you get confused and you ask yourself lord <laughs> but if this person was a christian why is it that the word of god is not very much real in this person's life so that's to show you that <clears throat> Where the problem is from is this. The word of God has not gone deep into the heart of men. And if the word of God has not gone deep into my life, it's very much hard for me to know the do's and don'ts. And for me to know what the Lord wants for me to do. And for me to know how I should live my life as a child of God or as a Christian. So it's not just seeing in mere words and saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. There are so many things that follow those that are Christians. 
There is a seed that is inside every true child of God. And this seed must bear some certain things in our life. If this seed is not bearing some certain things in your life, then I think you should not be asking yourself questions. You should be asking yourself some questions. What is wrong? Or is it that maybe I didn't visit the cross very much well? Or do I still need to go back to the cross? Or do I need to, need to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ, you know, to turn back to him? And I pray that um, that's what we'll look at the, in the world, and the world is going to help us to see more of Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name, we'll pray. Let's check up something in Matthew. In Matthew um, 19, uh, <clears throat> twenty-five. Um, <clears throat> look! Look at what the look at what the look at what the disciples were saying to Jesus. Um, we'll use some scriptures to check other scriptures. It says here, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. You get that? Then saying, who then can be saved? <laughs> but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. If you have not gotten to that stage in your Christian life where you can say, with me it is very much impossible. For me to live an overcoming Christian life. And you can get to that level where you say, well, not by power, not by might, but by the special grace of God, then with God all things are possible. It really shows that you are stepping up to the life of a true child of God. Now, the Christian life is supposed to cost us a lot of things. That's one. Jesus never said it's going to be a bed of roses. Which means, if I truly say, if Chedozier says he's a Christian, Chedozier has to be tested. If I say I'm a Christian, I have to pass through a lot of things that really show that I'm a Christian, which means that every bit of this scripture has to be fulfilled in my life. Every bit of those things that the apostles and disciples went through has to be fulfilled somehow in my life. So which means that somebody has to resist me for this scripture to be fulfilled in my life. Somebody has to resist me so that I can come to a level and the angels will be watching over me and they say, well, let's check. Let's check now if Chelsea is truly a Christian. Let's check now. These are a lot of life issues that will cloud the Christian. Then that is when the angels of God can really say, yes, this brother or this sister is a Christian. What am I trying to say? That... It's not just by in mere words where we say, oh, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I raise up my hand and all the rest. Some certain things should really show in your life if this person is a Christian. A child of God does not live in sin. Sin can never have dominion. Sin can never have mastery. Sin can never have power. Sin can never have authority over a child of God. If you understand this precept of the world, then you understand that it will no more be by your power anymore. Amen. That's where the disciples came to a level and said, wow, <laughs> if you say sin cannot have power over me anymore, <laughs> then it, it means that who there can be saved? <laughs> then they now came to the level where they say, or where Jesus said, with men, it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. This is a level whereby every Christian must come to. And it means that now you now totally surrender everything about you to God and say, Lord, take charge of my life. It will cost you self. <clears throat> it will cost you taking a lot of things away from your life. You know, yesterday I couldn't preach because I, I said to myself, possibly I think Chilo Zed need to... I need to check myself, you know, if I was still in the faith, you know. I don't know if it's like that for each and every one of us or we've come to a level whereby we don't have to check ourselves anymore. And, you know, I said to myself, what is the use of preaching a sermon and coming on a life illustration? No, I won't do that. Everybody can preach, but not me. I won't do that until I see that every day I'm walking like Jesus. <laughs> so if I see that 
possibly I didn't do something right, you know, and um, I'm feeling somehow in my spirit, man. There's no way I can climb the pulpit and come and preach the word. Possibly even if I have a crusade, I can tell the people, just try to see if you postpone this thing. I can't preach, you know. It's not by force to preach. <laughs> if you don't preach, you don't sin against. It's not like it's not like it's by force that you must climb a pulpit and you must minister to a whole lot of people. I'm not talking about evangelism now. It's not by force that you must do some ministerial activities and all the rest. First and foremost, your spiritual life. Your Christian life is what is more important. I've made a decision with myself. I will not become like a bus driver and begin to tell people or a conductor and tell people, go, go into the bus, come into the bus. And I myself, I'll be left behind and I'll just sit down and you know, everybody are coming into the kingdom and all the rest. No, I've decided that I won't be that kind of person. I'll be, by the grace of God, I will ensure that my own life, my own soul, Solomon says something, they take care of other people's vineyard and they forget their own. So I will ensure that I do not forget my own because your soul is what is more important to Jesus. Don't think that, you know, your own soul, apart from the people that you are trying to help out, your own soul, your own soul, your own soul, your own soul. I'm not, not another person's soul. Your own, your own is what is more important. So God really wants you to get to heaven first. Before you begin to try to take other people to heaven, ensure that you are walking the way to heaven first. That is the only way. So if every preacher can know this, they would understand that I should not preach until I am my life is moving according to the word of God. This is the life of a true Christian. Let's look at something in Romans. <clears throat> Let me show you something. Um, look at Romans. Um, Romans 8. I believe that this is why um, brother, brother Paul is known as one of the uh, biggest and the greatest apostles that ever lived on the earth. Uh, <clears throat> Romans 8, um, 38 to 39. Look at that in your Bible. It says, I'll, I'll read from 37. It says, Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Look at, look at 38 again. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. Look at verse 39. It says here, Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. This brother is too radical. What kind of human being is this? Look at what he says again. He says, shall be able to separate me. See, picture Paul, picture brother Paul speaking. Oh, neither height, nor depth, or nothing is going to separate me. You get away from me. You're not in, no creature, you know, no human being. Get away from me. You cannot separate me from the love of God. Look at what he says here. Shall be able to separate me us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the life of a true Christian. Brother Paul knows this. Whether you come to Brother Paul and you make Brother Paul angry, Brother Paul will say, neither you, you will not take me to that kingdom of darkness. I will not allow you, you know. Even if you come to Brother Paul and you want to make Brother Paul angry, he'll tell you, get away. Nothing will ever, this is what something is speaking in his heart. He might not say it, you know, but in his heart, he's, he's so violent and says, nothing is going to take me away from this love of God, not because of you and all the rest. I was speaking to someone and the person said, Brother Jesus, you are talking of Jesus. You see that Jesus is not angry or something like that. I was just laughing. <laughs> and then, was Jesus angry? Was Jesus living? See, there's a difference between you got angry and you are living constantly in anger. If you're living in a particular scene, it really shows that you need to visit the cross. Please rededicate your life to Jesus again. Something is wrong somewhere. I'll show you something in scripture and you understand that something is wrong somewhere because I'm asking myself, is it that either the word of God is not true or maybe 7 billion people on the earth are not true? Let me tell you the simple truth. In anything you do, follow this word. 7 billion people might be wrong, but the word of God will not be wrong. 8 billion people on the earth might be wrong, but the word of God will not be wrong because anything you see in the world, and it looks as if it's not normal in our normal Christian society, then it calls for asking a lot of questions because it seems as if then something is wrong. 
Something is wrong somewhere. What is this Christian life that we are trying to talk about? What is this Christian life that we must always portray? What was this kind of life, you know, that um, the disciples and some of the people of God, they were trying to portray and all the rest? Let me tell you the truth. If you say you are a Christian and people have not started resisting you, I can say your Christian testimony is not complete. Because how do I know I'm strong? I know I'm strong because somebody resisted me. What I mean is that, okay, how do you know you are strong? Some of these brothers that, or these people that fight um, and all the rest, these worldly people that do some wrestling and they do some, you know, fighting and all the rest, how do they know they are strong? I think it's when they have tried to resist somebody else and they now give them and say, you are now the champion. It's the same thing in the Christian life. How do you know you are strong? You cannot say you have overcome pride. You cannot say you have overcome anger, except somebody is resisting you. So which means that after that person resisted you and you overcome, you cannot say, yes, I've overcome this thing and all the rest. If you not see yourself constantly living in that particular you see, when you see me talking about sin, I don't talk about big sin. I don't talk about stealing. I don't talk about fornicating because all those things, I think maybe some of us are too, you know, skillful that we have, we have passed maybe that level of life. I don't know. But there is this other one that we need to climb up to. It's a higher life, you know. It's a, it's a bigger life, you know. It's a better life, you know. It's a stronger life, you know, than every Christian. That's why <clears throat> Jesus said, those that are the greatest are those that, you know, preach the least of these things. The least of these things. What are the least of these things Jesus was saying in Matthew? These little, little things. These little, little things. These are the things that you hardly find, you know, people talking about. Because... We have confined ourselves to holiness as the outward part. Let me tell you, I have this feeling that Satan has deceived like 95% of the earth when it even comes to this so-called holiness message. Because people have thought and fine-tuned in their hearts that, you know, when the outward man is very much sweet and okay and all the rest, it means that, you know, the inner man is very much okay. You can be like that and still get to hell, you know? But what is this life that God is expecting from us? Nothing should be able to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Nothing is what's taking you away from the faith. Don't say, you know, because of this, because of that, because of this. Okay, what does it mean? It means that your life is controlled by Satan, which means that that's what is called, you know, I talk about a spirit-filled controlled life. That's what is called a devilish controlled life. Or a Lucifer-controlled life. What is a Lucifer-controlled life? The devil says, I can allow this brother or this sister to do whatsoever I want him to do. I can pull out of the face. I can pull him out of the face. All he needs to do is just to bring somebody to touch you. Uh, just touch her small like this. Just touch her small in her eye. Just touch her small in her leg. Uh, this person falls away from the face. Is your Christian life like that? It shows that something is not abiding inside of you. Let's look at... <clears throat> Let, let, let's, let's look at um, something in scripture. Let's look at first John. Let's look at first John. Um, then we'll know, you know, if um, some of these things, you know, I'm asking myself, is it that the word of God is magic or maybe it's not really, or, you know, uh, it's only for these um, apostles and these disciples that have lived before and all the rest. <laughs> you know, um, there's this kind of deception I see in in, in Christian dome, let me advise you, and for as many persons watching me, I'll say this, and I'll say this for <clears throat> anybody that will watch this. If your church, because I will not be disturbing myself and trying to ensure that we try to put, protect the sheep from a lot of wolves outside there, and um, some persons come and you know they try to scatter whatsoever has come into your spirit, man. If where you go to, they do not stand on the totality of the word of God. Get away from that church. Even if, I see, listen to me, you don't need to get a special revelation. The biggest and the greatest revelation is the word of God. Amen. You don't need to get a special angel coming down from heaven and tell you, my sister, I think it's high time for you to live here. No, I say it again. If your church, wherever you stay, they don't stand on the word. They don't stand on the undiluted word. 
They don't stand on the message of holiness. What do I mean holiness? In what I'm out for. They don't stand in all these things. Tell you. Devil network, I rebuke you right away in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out right now, right now. Let the fire of God burn you down. Get out of here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus over the network of our brother. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost, take control. Holy Ghost, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shabbat Whatever the problem, right now in the name of Jesus, we release Holy Ghost fire to destroy that problem in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over the network. The blood of Jesus over the network. We plead the blood of Jesus over the network. We plead the blood of Jesus over the network. The blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, let your blood of God open the network in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. So can sanctify the network with the blood of Jesus, sir. We release fire and brimstone upon each and every demon walking against his network right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. We rain down fire and brimstone upon each and every demon walking against his network. Masuta Libra, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted. Be be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Kasuka libra ki yama sundalim, e libru i ka indali bosata, katota isali braha yama kundalim, o sundali bahandele bosatelam, every agenda planned against the network of our brother. Biscata, 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 makuta sika itu li brondele bosa. We release bombs and fire in the midst of the enemy wherever they are gathering against this network. Matuta isi kaliba. Let the bomb explode and scatter their plans. Any equipment they are using, makuta te la brusu tali amahunda lebo. Risu Ta, ta is Let those equipments cut. Ta. Let those equipment be destroyed by fire, by thunder. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we recover his network. We recover his network. In the mighty name of Jesus, we recover his network. Masuka Talia, we cover him with the blood of Jesus. We cover his network with the blood of Jesus. Talia Musa Nelebo, Rakato Lama San Delebo, O Kati Talima Sulia, Masulia Ikata Lebo Sondele. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord take control. Lord take control. Lord take control. Lord take control. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Kasutali ya masundele, rakasuli ya masundele, eketa ta masundele be, rakama sutali ya libra haya makandole. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, masukali libra ya masundele. Lord take control, Lord take control. Angels of God, angels of God, osi katali ya mahandele. Take control, take control. Kasuli masundeleka, ria batunda le, liba sunda liba, rakato ya masundeleka, eli bramo kai basunda le. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even you are a liar. Sikatali ya makundeleka, 
Let your glory be above. Let your glory be Glorify yourself, O Lord. Glorify yourself, O Lord. Glorify yourself, O Lord. Glorify yourself, O Lord. Let your glory be above all the earth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Let us all de- do this prayer point to recover recover the network of Brother Tiedos here. It looks like also Brother Godwin's network is somehow disturbing. Let us pray this prayer point. Recover, recover, recover. Let us recover their network in the mighty name of Jesus. Recover the network by fire. Recover the network by fire, by thunder in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. We recover the network of Brother Tiedos here and Godwin by fire, by thunder in the mighty name of Jesus. Be recovered. Be recovered. Be recovered, be recovered, be recovered in the mighty name of Jesus. Be recovered, be recovered, be recovered, be recovered, be recovered in the mighty name of Jesus. Be recovered, be recovered, be recovered in the name of Jesus. We command the network to be recovered by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Be recovered, be recovered, be recovered in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If uh, if I was his friend, he wouldn't disturb me. But because we are not friends, so he has to disturb, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so when you are friends with somebody, he helps you out, you know. And um, when you need power, it discards you, you know, and it does everything to stop you. Okay. <clears throat> so, like, like we are saying, um, like I was saying. So basically, um, if you're in a place and you know they don't stand according to the word, <laughs> my advice. I'm not saying I heard an angel speak to me. Get out of there as fast as possible, because with time they'll get you corrupt. Hmm. With time you begin to dance like them. With time, you begin to wear high heels like them. With time, you begin to open up your head like them. With time, you begin to open up your body like them. With time, you begin to think the way they think. <clears throat> and that's not the life of a Christian. Let's check out something in, in First John. Uh, is sin having power and dominion over you? If it is so in your life, then possibly you need to Go back and checkmate your Christian life, or you need to visit the cross, or you need to close the door and close everywhere and hide yourself somewhere, or maybe go to the mountain and you know talk to the Lord until He can rekindle the fire inside of your spirit, man. You know, let me just tell you the simple truth. Let me open up to you. <laughs> There's nothing special in preaching. Praise the Lord. <laughs> There's nothing special in preaching. There's nothing special in prophesying. There's nothing special in singing. <laughs> All these things, yeah, there's nothing special about them. Even a little baby can do that if you train the person very much well, because <clears throat> anybody can do that. But there is something special in the Christian life, the character. The character of a Christian is something very much special, you know? Okay. Um. Uh, Uh, let's open there. Um, okay. Okay. 
Okay, uh, <clears throat> I realize this other one is, <clears throat> I don't get the scripture in this one here. And uh, <clears throat> let's look at First John. Let's look at that in um, three. Okay, let's read from verse one. Look at that. It says, behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed on us, <clears throat> that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. Because he did not know him. Look at verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not been yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. This thing does not happen like magic. It does not happen like magic. Like when Jesus comes, you immediately look like him. It's right now as you're on the earth. And as you are moving, and as you are moving, as you are moving, as you are moving, you look like him. Then when he comes, you get perfected, and you rise up to heaven. So it's not like when he comes, immediately that's when a magical something will appear, and you just look like him. It's a process. It's a process. You're walking up in the Christian life, and gradually, 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 you're looking like him. Look at what he says in um, <clears throat> verse 3. He says, and everyone who has this hope in him, purifies himself just as he's pure. How are you purifying yourself? How are you ensuring that your heart and everything about you is totally blameless before the sight of man and the sight of God? All these little, little scriptures that you are seeing, they are very much important for the Christian life. That you purify yourself and you purify your heart that there is no vile or there is no guilt. Remember what Jesus said about Nathaniel, a man that there is no guilt or vile. Do you know what that means? I think that means something like hypocrisy or something like that. Your Christian life is not hypocritical, you know. In the morning, you are a good Christian. On Sunday, you know, you are good and you appear here, you are nice and all the rest. Or maybe, you know, maybe it's when you see me, you know, on Facebook and, you know, preaching. And that's when, you know, I'm a good person and, you know, I'm trying to look like Jesus. But inside of my inner life, you know, <clears throat> look at what the, the Lord Jesus Christ approved Nathaniel. Oh, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, I see you. A man that there is no guy inside of him and all the rest. There's no hypocrisy inside of him. Is it like that in your Christian life? If it's like that, I can boldly tell you that possibly check up your salvation experience. Check up if you still have Jesus in there. Because I wonder why. If the seed of God is abiding inside of you, some certain things will be growing inside of your life. This is how it happens. You think the man is converted and he comes to Jesus. The seed of God abides there. Oh, you know, like nice. you have planted something like a, a mango, or let me not use a mango, like um, a, 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 somebody please, please don't make noise there. Um, use your mic if, you're, um, if there is some noise around where you're staying. Okay. Um, so if you've looked at something like, you know, um, what, what do they call this? Something like an orange, an orange seed. I hope you know how an orange seed is like, you know, it's very little. If you plant it inside, what happens? You see that it doesn't grow instantly. It takes like three years or something like that, or two years, if I'm right, before it grows well. But when you plant it, something happens. In less than one day, check it up very much. If you're a good scientist, if you're a good, um, you know, um, scientist like that, it begins to build up some roots and some stems. It begins to fall like that for a Christian. If truly the seed of God is abiding inside of you, the fruit of the Holy Ghost will begin to grow. The nine of them will begin to grow. Little by little. Joy, peace, happiness, all those things. Self will be destroyed. Humility. It will be growing, 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 growing. Give it some time. Three years. Maybe that's when you now become a strong, balanced, mature Christian and you now grow big. If these things are not seen in your life, if this is, I don't, I don't mean, it's not about how wonderfully, maybe you preach very much well, or you are gifted. All those things have nothing to do with the Christian life. All those things are just there to help maybe possibly the unbelievers. That's why 
all these signs. Why is it that I don't prophesy here and all the rest? I know what I'm doing, you know. Why is that I like to do that on Facebook? It's a sign to mostly, you know, unbelievers and, you know, people that are coming because I know that there's a way to use the gift. There's a way to use the gift. Basically, it's for some certain people, you know, that have not really understood the Lord and unbelievers that need to come to the Lord and all the rest. But I realized that if truly I'm a Christian, all these things must be growing in my life. All these things must be growing, must be growing. If it's not growing in your life and you cannot see a trace of the fruit of the Spirit inside of your life, check back your salvation life experience. I don't think you are saved. Uh, sorry to say. Maybe something happened or maybe somebody lied to you and maybe an angel just appeared to you because the Bible says the seed of God. Where is that seed of God that is abiding inside of you? Is it magic? Where is the seed? Where is that seed that is abiding that? I can say this is a child of God. Where is that seed? It's an inner seed. It's a life, you know, and all the rest. So, my brothers and sisters, the life of a Christian is that you pass through a lot of things that will really show. The heaven will be watching. The angels will be watching. Let's watch it here right now. You know what they will do? See what they will do. They'll send somebody to me, and you know, they'll send somebody to slap me, and all the rest. The angels will be watching. Let's watch what they will do. You know, the father will be watching. Let's look at him, you know. Let's see what he will do there. And the, immediately I act upon what has happened to me. They say, uh, he's failed the test, you know. Uh, something is wrong, you know. And maybe they give me another chance and I have to repent and come to the Lord, you see. So that's why there's nothing like, you know, this once you are saved and, you know, you are forever saved and all the rest and you are forever okay and all the rest. You cannot go back and all the rest. The truth about it is that all these things are coming to you so that the Lord can uplift you and he can give you more strength because if truly you say you have joy, that thing has to be tested. If truly you say you have peace, problem will have to come so that let's know if this person truly has peace, you know. Let's check it. They just are watching. Okay. It's not magic. Don't think it's magic that one angel will come and pour peace in your heart. No, you have to pass through it. When you're not pass through, that's what the Bible says, passing through the fire. And that's what the Bible says, your work will be tested inside of the fire. And when you come out and when you are tried and you have become strong and that's when you can say, oh, now I'm a Christian, you know. <laughs> not when you have not passed through this. So, you see, I'm not talking about big pain. I'm not saying maybe you, you slept with somebody. I'm not saying maybe you go to party. You know, I'm not saying maybe you drink. I'm not talking about all this big, big stuff and all the rest. Because let me tell you, you, can, you might not be born again and you might not do all those things. There are people that are moral. They are just morally good, you know. While I was still in the Roman Catholic Church, I can still say, you know, that I was quite, you know, morally good, you know, that I don't do some certain things. It does not mean I'm born again, you know. I even said I was trained, you know, not to wear shorts. I was trained not to wear shorts as a master, you know, we don't wear shorts. So we, we, we're trying to follow the precept of the priest, you know, and all the rest. And we're trying to be good and holy and all the rest. But I was not born again, you see. But I was not, I was not doing bad. I was not drinking. I was not going out. I was not, you know, moving around with bad gangs. And all that. I was quite good, you know, but I was not born again. So you see that all those big, big things that you're talking of, even the people of the world, they, they know how to escape it. Satan is too wise. Satan knows that uh, this one, you know, if I if we allow him to do it, if he, the person will feel that he's not converted. So Satan will not allow you to do all those things so that you will not think that, I'm okay, you know. So that's what I used to think. Maybe I, I'm okay, you know. I don't do all these big, big songs and all the rest. That's not what we are talking about. Look at these small, 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 small ones. These are the ones that are able to lead into a great disaster for the Christian life. It's a journey you are passing through in your working place, you know. Let's see. The Lord, the angels want to test. Is she really a Christian, you know? So you know what they do? They send your boss. A spirit comes into your boss. Boom. The, don't you, don't you understand? Jesus is planning all these things. See, the Lord, let me tell you, the devil there at the end of time is for the glory of God. What I mean is that all those things that he's doing, is just at the end of time, it will work all together for the good of that particular Christian. And all the way. So in your working place, you know, somebody comes and, you know, does some certain things to you. And you are supposed to submit this fight. Or this person was supposed to, and this person lies against you and say, no, she didn't submit the fight and all the rest. If you come there, take things easy. Don't rush. Calm down. Because if you rush and begin to speak against this person, you will miss it out. And the angels are there. I can watch them. They are just there, you know. You know, they just write it down and say, ah, oh, she, she missed it and all the rest. And you cannot get that. You cannot climb up. You cannot rise up in your Christian life. And if all these things are overcoming you constantly, it really shows that 
something is wrong with your salvation experience. Check it out, you know. It's not all this stuff that somebody raises up his hand and, and you say that, you say that. You say, this is a deeper life. It is even better that the Holy Ghost convicts you of a lot of things and you can now have a strong spiritual backbone in your Christian life. You know why? You will have power. You will be filled with authority if this kind of life is inside of you and all the rest. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be, my brothers and sisters. That's how the Christian life is supposed to be, you know. You know, yesterday I just, I, I still went to the Lord and I was just talking, you know, Lord. It's like you still need to do much more in my life, you know. I was just thinking, ah, I didn't walk like Jesus here. Or I didn't become like Paul yeah, and all the rest. Because I, I feel that the Christian life, my Christian growth is supposed to be every day. So if I'm not growing every day, you know, there's a problem. I don't know if it's like that with everybody. Or maybe I, I have made a mistake to think that everybody might be like that. But maybe your Christian life might not be growing every day. It could be growing every week. It could be growing every month. But if it's growing every year, you know, there is a big problem. But of course, Paul got to a time whereby it was like an everyday something. So every day you check meet yourself. You truly ask yourself, this salvation, this thing, this seed of God, is this thing inside of me? Mm. Or, you know, am I overtaken by mm. some certain things in my life? Maybe by prosperity, maybe because you think God has given you money and all the rest. And you think anybody, God can even give anybody, even... Even devils have money and you know, there people that have money and all the rest. So it's not a sign of God's approval of you and all the rest. It is gift. Anybody has gifts now. Let me tell you the truth. Even before I was converted, I still noticed some certain spiritual things that were happening. Anybody can do these things. But there's a life of a Christian. You'll be tested through all those nine fruits. People would be used to do all those things. It's not demons. Human beings like you will be used. And that's how we know that you are a Christian by the grace of God. At some point in time, a particular bishop called me and, you know, it was like, oh, Chedo say, someone, you know, like when they summon you, you know, okay, come down and come and answer to question him, you know. And I sat down, you know, and I was thinking, you know, what would Jesus do and all the rest. There's something the man said, if I didn't want to go there, he won't do me anything, you know. Uh, <clears throat> even though they wanted to call some police and all the rest to get me arrested, these are religious matters, you know, and uh, so what you find in the world, you know, you can still get in the church. And, and you know, I just felt in my spirit that Chedo say, humble yourself and go and meet this man, no matter what he might be saying, even if he's wrong. And I went there. This man learned something. This bishop said something, said, I'm so surprised. You still carry yourself and come here, no matter what, and all the rest. And you know what he said? After he listened to everything, he just said, go. Now I see that possibly the Lord wants to do something in your life and all the rest. What am I saying? If I had pushed up and said, no, I won't come and all the rest. No, God was trying to teach me something. And you know, God has taught that man something. He has taught him something that the Christian life is all about being obedient to the spirit and humbling yourself and coming low and all the rest and following the word. Let's go down. I want to show you something as we go down. Look at verse 4. In um, 1 John 3, verse 4, it says, Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Verse 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Are you, are you watching this now? See the problem. Now, this is where some people might get it all wrong, you know. I know I know how people get into internal security and one saved and all they saved, you know, because I was almost getting confused when I read the word. I was not like, God, is it that, um, is it that, uh, you know, I also, I used to believe, I used to feel that, you know, when you have the salvation inside of you, when you are truly saved, you know, nothing should be able to steal it and shake it away from you. Somehow that's, that's, that topic is so much deep. Not that the doctrine is very much true, but truly if you're a child of God, if truly you are a child of God and the seed of God is abiding inside of you, there are some certain things that should not be in your Christian life. Look at what it says in, um, <clears throat> In verse 5, it says, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. So if you are truly saved, did he take away your sins? Or is it that he did not take away your sins? Oh. These are questions you should not ask yourself. Look at this. And in him, there is no sin. Okay? If you say that Jesus is living inside of you, why is it that you still do, do not have power to overcome anger? You still do not have power to overcome pride? You still do not have power to overcome malice? You still do not have power to overcome... Okay, what is the problem? If truly you say that... Is it not the Bible I'm reading? You know, I'm not reading any special scripture. It says, in him, there is no sin. In him, there is no sin. So, which means if I'm in Jesus... And Jesus is in me. There's no sin in me. And there's no condemnation for me. I cannot walk in sin. Listen to me. There is a difference when you just fall into sin. And there is a difference when you are conscious of sin. You are conscious of that evil thing that you are doing. 
These are some certain understanding that we must have about the Christian life and about the salvation I experience. And you must check back yourself and ask yourself if truly, you know, you are in the faith or I am in the faith or we are still in the faith or we are still getting to heaven and all the rest. It's more than, you know, the artificial things and the things we see outside there. Let me show you another thing. Look at verse 6. It says, whoever abides in him does not sin. Big problem. <laughs> whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Big problem. So if you see somebody constantly living in sin, it means that he does not know Jesus. Forget about the fact that he's on the puppies. It means that he does not know Jesus. Forget about that he's living in a lot of people. It means that they don't really know Jesus. See, let's follow the word. You know, that's why I told you that if you want to follow Jesus, you will humble yourself according to this word. Follow this word, no matter how it looks like. I know that this particular scripture might very look, you know, funny to a lot of people and all the rest. So, does it mean that I'm not? That's true, you know. It's not me that said it. Look at what Jesus said. You know, Jesus said, yeah. So, let me not be using me. Or, um, Apostle John, you know. Let me say John said, because if I if I quote the scripture, if you look as if, Maybe it's me that wrote the scripture or something like that. So let me say, Apostle John or Brother John said, whoever abides in him does not sin, which means that you cannot sin deliberately. Okay, you have known in the world that you should not do this and all the rest. And you are still saying, no, I will do this and I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. There is a sign that something is wrong with your salvation experience. There is a sign that truly you have not seen it because look at what the Bible says, whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever seen has neither seen him or known him. What does he mean? Whoever seen, which means you have not seen Jesus. Maybe you have heard of Jesus. That's why there are things I say. Maybe some people have heard of Jesus or they are admiring Jesus, but they have not seen Jesus. Because if you have seen Jesus, the Bible says, whoever loves me, keep my commandments. So if you do not keep the commandment of the work, you don't love Jesus. So it's not by saying, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. You know, and you cry, oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. And you think, oh, Jesus, I love you. It's not by all those stuff. That's why the Bible says, hypocrites. Hypocrites will end. There are many people that will, you see hell. <laughs> you can't stop people from going to hell. This one thing I've realized. I can't stop people from going because people will get to hell. You know why? Because they refuse to read the word and understand what the Holy Spirit is trying to say. So people will get to hell. You can't stop it. Even God himself knows that he cannot stop it because he has put a rule in his word. So you must abide by his word. So if truly I love Jesus, how do we know that you love Jesus? And who are those that love Jesus? We know that it is disciples and Christians that love Jesus. So how do I know I love Jesus? Do you keep his commandments? <clears throat> Humble yourself. Do you keep that? No anger. Do you keep that? No pride, you keep that. So you see, it just shows me that <laughs> maybe you don't love the Lord. So it's not in it's not in the things that you do. Let me tell you, many people might not have the opportunity to preach, but they will get to heaven. When I mean, they might do one or two little things, and they might be paper sellers, and they might not be, you know, very much great. That's why in Rapture Day time, when we are trying to do something, you know. We are not looking at how eloquent you might be. We are not looking at how wealthy you might be. We don't care. We don't care, you know. You know this is one evil that I see in the body of Christ. A preacher organizes a crusade. How dare you? That's rubbish. Rubbish I see in Christian though. How dare you organize a crusade and you give a politician the power to stand on a puppet to speak? It's because you don't know the power of what it is to be a man of God or to be a servant of God. How dare you allow a politician to climb on that puppet? Who are you? Who is the politician? Let him sit down like the other people. Let him sit down. If you're rich, sit down like the other people. Listen to the word like the other people. You're a human being like them. These are some rubbish. You know why? Because people have not seen Jesus. Can you imagine Jesus organizing a crusade and says, Herod, <laughs> come and come and take the first speech, you know. Or you know, he says, Pilate, you know, brother Pilate, come here. You know, the people want to see you. Come and talk to your people and all the rest. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus doing that? Can you imagine Jesus, you know, organizing a crusade and says, Oh, Donald Trump, you know, come, come up and speak to your people and all the rest. But what's his business? You get the way and sit down like the other people are listening to the word of God. Are you really a Christian? Are you following Jesus? Are you standing by the word of God? Oh, we are following doctrines of men and doctrines that we are seeing. You see what I say? If they are not standing on the word of God, get away from that place, 
dismiss yourself from that place. Tell the pastor, repent, or you go to hell and pack your bag and go from that place. You have not sinned against God. You have done the right thing because your soul is what is more important to Jesus. It's not just enough for me to preach. And after I finish preaching, you know, and somebody goes there and begins to hear some other things, and the pastor, they begin to put all the rubbish and all the rest, and I begin to do some digging again. It's like I'm wasting my time, you know. Stand on the word. Stand on the word. Stand on the word. Stand on the world, don't follow the people, don't follow the crowd and all the rest. They will kill you because they're the ones that kill Jesus. Follow the world. So if you see some certain things and it looks hard, all you will tell the Lord, that scripture has now been fulfilled in your life. With man, it is impossible because there are words of Apostle Paul that look very hard. That even Peter said it, uh, this man, Apostle Paul, we can't understand him because it's like, uh, I don't know where he came from or something like that because his understanding is too big. Well, it shows that you need to say and let that scripture be fulfilled. With God, all things are possible. With me, it is impossible. Is it like that in your Christian life? Oh, let's go down now. <laughs> look at this. Um, look at verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. <laughs> Do you understand that? You know, when you see John speaking, it's the Holy Spirit. Every scripture is guided by the Holy Spirit. So let's say it's still Jesus speaking here. Because all these guys were looking at Jesus and all these brothers and all these people, they were just looking at Jesus and following everything Jesus was doing. So it says here, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he's righteous. Look at our saves. It's not me that said it. He who sins is of the devil. Simple. <laughs> Is it not very simple? He who sees is of the devil. There's no two ways about it, you know. So, how do we say this? So, everyone that sins and keeps on living the sin, whether they are bishops, whether they are apostles, they are of the devil. <laughs> it's very simple, you know. If you say this kind of thing outside, some people will say, ah, he's proud. Ah, is this. You know, when Jesus was saying it, you bypass and all the rest, get away from here. You are. So, some people were saying, I know the Pharisees were saying, what's wrong with this 30 year old brother and all the rest? Is he not young? Was I not there when they gave birth to him? Why would he say all these things? Oh, Jesus knew his father. The life of a Christian is that he checkmates himself with the word. And he sees, if he sees in the faith, he does not checkmate himself with the revelation. He does not checkmate himself whether he's eating with angel. What's, what's our business? Even if you eat with angel, what's, what's our business? Even if you eat with Jesus, what's, is that what will be used um, to judge you on the last day? On the last day, you know, there won't be a book where it says, those who eat with Jesus, or those who have seen heaven and hell stand here, or something like that, you know. <laughs> or those, you know, who have, you know, gone to, you know, play with Jesus in the mansion, and all those things are all... All those things are just for edification. They, they are not doctrines, you know. After you get that and you have listened to that, throw them away and keep them one place and go to the world so that you and I can grow. This is the only way. It's a lie. It's a lie. And that's why I can say 90 something percent of the people that profess to be Christians are not really Christians. If we follow the world, judging according to the world, judging according to this Bible that we see here, 90 something, you know, 90 something. Look at this. He who sins, look at this in verse 7 again. Little children, let no one deceive you. Why is he saying? Because people will definitely deceive you. That's why he's saying, let no one deceive you. Look at this. He says, He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he's righteous. Look at verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, but the devil has sinned from the beginning, from the purpose. The Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of Satan. Look at verse 9. The most interesting part of it all. Whoever, just be opening your scripture as I'm opening my scripture so that it doesn't look like, uh, you know, uh, all these things are in my scripture and maybe it's not in yours. Okay. It says, whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. If truly you are saved, <clears throat> there are some certain things, CM, you only know some percentage of your life. There are some percentage of your life you cannot know now until the Lord reveals to you. But the level that God has helped you to understand, don't go out of that place 
What I mean is that there are many things I don't still know right now. I'm gradually, gradually trying to look like Jesus, look like Jesus. But with the level that God has helped you to see in his word, don't go against it. Because when you go against it, it really shows that possibly if truly the seed of God is abiding inside of you, there's some certain things you won't be able to do. That's what this Bible is saying. Though some certain times you can fall under some sin and all the rest. That's why every time a Christian has to be checking himself every day. You have to be checking yourself, checking yourself, checking yourself, checking yourself, so that you don't just have this feeling and say, I'm all right and all the rest. I'm okay. I'm very good. And I'm a very wonderful Christian and all the rest. Is it like that in your life? It's a life, you know. Have you overcome all these things? Have you overcome all this power of the flesh and self and all the rest? Like I always tell people, did the Bible say that some certain things? See, another particular scripture that it is very hard. Let me tell you, this particular scripture, if you obey it, is greater than raising a dead person. I'll show you where that scripture is. Open to Hebrew. Once you obey it, anybody that has raised a dead person, I can say you are much more better and greater than that person. Because this particular part of scripture when I look at it, this is the bedrock of holiness. Um, Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verse 14. Follow peace. Or another version says, pursue peace with all people. What does it mean to pursue peace? It's not saying that you will be the one that is, which means, People automatically will be wrong. But still yet, follow them wherever they go. Still follow the peace. What it means is that it's not saying that you'll be the one that will be afforded to. When it says follow peace or pursue peace, which means that you run after it. Do everything. Do everything. Do everything possible and all the rest. Because, look at this. Pursue peace with all people. With all people. This one is very... Because there are people that are stubborn. And I've seen, you know, some people are stubborn that before you pursue with, as in you just keep on chasing and chasing and chasing. And, but what I realize in this part of scripture is that the scripture didn't say that I should relent. It says continue. Continue. And these are some certain things I learned over time that don't still relent. Continue, 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 continue. Look at what it says. Follow peace with all people and holiness. Without which, you know, some people think that the first step here is peace, following peace. Then the last says and holiness. Some people that are not grounded in the world will be saying, holiness, 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 holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness. Let's take our Bible now. Holiness. Holiness. All those things are words. They are words. It's not from the heart. It's words. If you want to follow the scripture, follow the number one step. If you don't follow number one step, you can never, ever get to number two step. It's impossible. You have not followed one. You want to follow two. How come? How did it happen? Because for you to follow peace with all men, you deny yourself from a lot of things. You deny yourself, which means that you are right. But because you want to follow people, you don't. Hey, somebody's making noise there. Don't mute your mic, please. I'm hearing babies talking and something like that. Um, <clears throat> so what it means, what it means here is that, what it means here is that people are the one. People are the one that would come and do this thing, which means you have to die to self for you to do that. You have to keep on dying and, you know, you have to come low for you to do that. And all because you are right. Possibly you are perfectly right. But for the sake of this scripture, you say, I'm sorry. So it will be very hard when you have taught yourself to be very big. You see why we say in rapture at the end time, we may be very small. Because if you are very big, you can never, look at this Bible. Let's say this Bible is like this. And you know somebody is here. For you to bend down to come to this lesson level, you're looking at me. Look at me. I'm big, you know. How can I come down here and all the rest? First and foremost, before you get to this scripture and you say you have obeyed it, you must ensure that you are very small first in your own eyes. And you have not predetermined yourself to be very much big because if it's like that, you will never follow peace with all men. You would always think in your heart that you are much more better and you are much more spiritual and you have climbed to the heart. 
Can you imagine Apostle Paul thinking that? It's not Apostle Paul that said, all these guys and all these people, they are much more better than me. A whole Apostle Paul, big Apostle Paul. No wonder in heaven they are celebrating that young man. Because I know heaven has not seen any man like that before. I can boldly say that I've not seen a man on the surface of this planet like Apostle Paul. Personally for me, that's what I can say. I don't know if maybe in time to come people will get there. Because the things that he did and all the rest, the sacrifices he made, I don't know if anybody. So that's why if you are looking at Jesus, also look at him also, and you'll get there by the grace of God. Well, <clears throat> and he says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So after you have followed peace, then holiness now, which is the life. Holiness is that life that we are talking about, the life, the life of God himself. The life of God himself is the life of Jesus himself. Then when you are able to do this, then you can say, I'm a true disciple of Jesus. I'm a Christian. I know what it is to serve Jesus. I'm a Christian. Truly, I know the Lord. This is the true test of those that are serving the Lord. And I pray that God will help each and every one of us. You see, if you raise the dead, <clears throat> it's very easy. If you heal the blind, it's very easy. If you prophesy, it's quite easy, you know. If you can't follow this one, if you follow this one, in heaven, someday you'll be regarded as the greatest in God's kingdom. Who are those that are the greatest? <clears throat> those that stand on the world. There are a lot of things I will say to you, but I'm not able to say right now. But if I say those things, I know people will not agree with me. But I believe that let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And um, let the Holy Spirit convince you. Like Apostle Paul says, <clears throat> no problem. I know you don't believe what I'm saying and all the rest. But the Lord himself will definitely confirm all those things to you. In everything you do, stand by the word. And I know that God is going to give us the grace to get there and to make it up at last with man. Now we can say like the apostles. Now I know why the disciples say, oh, Lord, who then can be saved? <laughs> so if we have not got into that extent where we say, who then can be saved? So I think before any evangelist begins to preach and all the rest, I think that scripture is very much important. Let them know what they are getting into. So you tell them who then can be saved. Let them be able to say who then can be saved. Then they can say with God. All things are possible. With man, it's impossible. And that moment, if they receive the Lord after you have given them this kind of truth to backslide. Have you ever seen Apostle Paul backsliding? Why is that Apostle Paul did not backslide? Have you ever seen Apostle Paul chasing the world and all the rest? Maybe Apostle Paul loving money and chasing money and all the rest. And have you ever, you know, think about that. Do you ever see that in the Bible? Have you ever seen John or Timothy or all these brothers doing all these things? Why? Are they not human beings? Because salvation experience has level. There are levels. <laughs> salvation experience is not all these shabby, shabby ones we see around. It's deep. Before you enter into that hole, better know what you are facing because it's going to be dark inside there. But as you're coming out, you come out through a great light. God is going to give us the grace <clears throat> and going to give us the power and it's going to give us the mind and I'm going to stand upon his word. This is the life of a Christian. And God is going to help us. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Um, <coughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, thank you, Lord. Your ways are not the ways of man. Yes, Lord. With, with man, it's impossible. Who, who would ever make it to heaven, you know, with all these standards? It's not too big, Lord. But that's why we say we need your grace. Because it's not by power. We can't defeat you. We can't defeat the devil just like that. It comes with understanding the word. Lord, remember when you quoted the scripture to the devil because... He needed to hear the word again. Imprint your word in our hearts, Lord. Lord, let there be no falling away, Lord. Even in our midst, Lord. Help your love to reign. And help us to abide by your word. No matter what it might look like. It might look very hard. 
It might look like in the whole world, everybody has followed this pattern. But that's why you call the rapture at the end time movement. To set all oh, those okay. things that are not right in the world and to put them back, you know? To put all those things that have been thrown apart and to bring them back, Lord. This is a generation that seek the Lord. A generation that loves the Lord. A generation that understands and follows the word of the Lord. Lord God Almighty. It's not just mere words of holiness, but practical life. Practical Christian life, Lord. It's your word we just read. And on that great day, your word will be positioned. We will stand in your presence, Lord, and the angels will open the book. They'll say, Chief, those say you are here right now. And they open the book. They open the Bible. This is what we use to stand against every man. But there is no condemnation to them that are already in Christ Jesus. Because they just get to heaven. They are not being judged like that, Lord. Because the word itself will justify all their deeds. Let it be so in our life, Lord. That we just get to heaven, Lord. And oh, Lord, at the end, they say just welcome. And the gate of heaven just opens for your children. Because we are stood by the world. Because we have followed the world. Because we have hungered for the world. Because we have eaten the world. Lord, if the gift will take us away from heaven, take it away from us. If the money will take us away from heaven, take it away from us. If everything you give to us will take us from your kingdom, take it away from us, I pray right now. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Lord, the Amen. thing that will stand as a stumbling block in the life of your children, to blindfold the eyes of your children, take it away. Lord God Almighty, Amen. we can get to heaven without all those things. Look at the apostles, the disciples, they preached and their clothes were tattered. These guys and these brothers were illiterate. They were illiterate. They didn't even know English. They couldn't speak. They didn't have PhD. They didn't have a master. They didn't have a degree. But heaven celebrates this one. This one, the whole end of the world are celebrating them. Lord, these are the kind of people that we are looking at. These are the kind of people. When Pilate was looking at them and Herod, they were saying, these people, they were ashamed even to come close to the disciples and the apostles because they felt that these ones, their life is just useless. Let it be so in our life. You know, when people see us, they think that, you know, but Lord, to be in you is gain. To love you is gain, Lord. Help us to follow your commandments to the end. Give us your grace. We pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, after all the whole um, things have been taken, um, um, I'll, I'll come up, or I think I should take that now, so that um, after now, um, please, I think we wouldn't, and I won't waste time for um, all those um, offering stuff and all the rest, since we already know what to do. Uh, <clears throat> after just five minutes, we just jump to, you know, I think it's prayer and all the rest. So I just take a little bit of announcement and all the rest. Um, after, after now, we won't dismiss. Everybody can dismiss. Then the workers can wait behind. And, uh, and also, we will be having the brothers fellowship by five, you know. I want the brothers to know their authority and the power that they have. They have some big power. They have some great power. All the sisters will not be thinking, you know. Five children, everybody, you know, brothers, you know. <laughs> this one's uh, God has a plan for the human race. And in the human race, there's a great plan, you know. God wants the brothers, you know, to be at the war front, you know, so that they can chase the enemy. And I know he's going to also do the same thing with the sisters, you know. We also have our place in the kingdom. But let's follow the world because there are some certain things you cannot do. There are some certain things that have been given to the brothers. Follow Paul. Don't follow me. Look at Paul. If you look at Paul and Jesus, they will teach you everything that you need to know by the grace of God. So by five, we'll have that. Uh, we'll have the brothers uh, meeting. And uh, for the brothers meeting, an ID will be sent to Rod. And uh, Sister Joy, please, maybe you prepare an ID for Ross by <coughs> five or before five, by the grace of God. And, uh, and God will help us. I'm thinking, remember, next week, I might not fully be with us first uh, because of the uh, upcoming crusade in, in Delta, you know. So if, if those that are watching me and they're around there, 
possibly you can come around. I think I'll be there for some three days for a power pack crusade by the grace of God. And uh, <clears throat> and also next week, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to also have, I have to meditate on that. Possibly we might have another crusade on Facebook, you know, I don't know. But it's going to be mainly a prayer and a prophetic a prayer and a prophetic crusade. So just, just I'm going to be praying and prophesying, praying and prophesying. I'm not going to preach one scripture and all the rest. Um, so, but I don't know if that will hold and you know, God will help us. But on Monday, we'll have our normal video, so let's be there and all the rest. Last week, video, God did something great and mighty in my life. I wrote it down, you know, and I don't think I can forget that. And I'm just praying, God, help me, God, help me, because it's so, so wonderful, you know. So, it's not just on you that is receiving. I also am, you know, trying to receive. So, as you're trying to, you know, get all those things, I also need to. So, I also am in need, the way you are in need. So, don't think that, you know, I've got into a level where I'm not in need. I'm in need, you know, <laughs> even though I might not show my head, you know, I'm in need of a lot of things, you know, but um, <clears throat> not really so much of the things on the earth and all the rest. That might just be the only thing. So um, let's just keep up with that and um, let's keep um, <clears throat> inviting our friends and all the rest. Like you see, we are trying to do a restructuring in REM. It's for a particular purpose and all the rest. Not that anything has gone wrong, but we're just trying to ensure, you know, that. Um, we see how to help the people grow. And by the grace of God, next week or next two weeks, there's something we'll plan. Um, it's going to be a discipleship class. So I think I will talk to the Bible study. Well, I'll, I'll talk to the workers about that. Maybe we'll have a meeting and try to plan that. A discipleship class. This discipleship class is going to be like we understand the foundational teachings on, on salvation and some certain things. So it's going to be like one hour before the service. So for those that want to be there, and all the rest. I don't think, you know, um, we could play some, you know, live videos and see some certain things, you know, on the Christian life so that we can have some strong um, backbone by the grace of God. And I believe the Holy Spirit is um, going to help us as we journey to heaven in Jesus Christ. Then we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, I'll hand over to uh, Sister Shimlori. Um, Give me oil in my life, keep me bony. Give me oil in my life, I pray. Give me oil in my life, keep me bony. Keep me born into the glorious day. Give me oil in my life. Keep me born Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I hope and I believe we are blessed by the word. Amen. I'm touched by the word. And I really thank God because it really penetrated into my heart. Amen. I believe it's the same with you. Amen. Let us Amen. keep pressing on to perfection. Mm -hmm. Let us not think that we are there, we have come there, we are too big, we are this, we are that. Let us keep pride away from our lives. Amen. Oh God. Give me oil in my life. Keep me bonny. Give me oil in my land. I pray. Give me oil in my land. Keep 
इतनी बोनी As this song goes on, let us do our offering. Let us give on to the Lord. Giving offering is nothing. If your character is still the same, <laughs> giving offering is nothing. Preaching is nothing. <laughs> Jesus. Singing is nothing, Jesus Christ. Your character, Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Give me one. Prophecy is nothing. Give me one. Give me Bonnie to the glory Lord, give us all Keep me Give us Break us, Lord, of the kindness of the Lord of the name of Jesus to hold our side. Let our life be not in vain, O Lord, after listening to all these sermons, after doing your Holy Spirit reign in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit reign in our lives, O Lord, as we walk by the Spirit. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. <laughs> 
Lord, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Lord, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Lord, let me not be like the seed that is born on the wayside, the seed that is born, so now I'm torn, the seed that is so oh my God, let me be seed be so in the presence transform me from within Lord. Transform my heart. Let us touch ourselves. If the trophies stand now, will you correct me? It's not all about attending night vigils. It's not all about attending It's not all about money. It's not all about money. Oh, 
the grace for the workers we are going to remain for the workers we are going to remain <coughs> let us unmute our mics and share the grace the grace of the grace of our Lord the love of, the love of God, God and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. rest in our mind with us and now and forever. Now and forever. Amen. 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 Surely, God's goodness Amen. shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Shalom, everybody. Shalom. 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 Prepare the way of the Shalom. Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha. Maranatha. Take not your Holy Spirit from me, Jesus. Restore to 